So now we're going to, instead of looking at instantaneous relationships, we're going to start to look at how these relationships change with time. So going, going back to our spring, here's a, here's a plot of uh, the extension of the spring over time. And if we apply a force, how will the position change? Or if we asked it backwards, if we uh, increase the position, how would the force change? So it's pretty simple. It is a proportional relationship, which means that it doesn't actually matter how things change with time. So if I skip to the next slide, what we can say is that if I apply a constant force, the position, the extension of the spring, will not change over time. So when we draw that on a graph, it's going to be a straight line. But let's try, instead of just having this constant force, what happens if we didn't have the force and then we applied it? How would that change? Well, it would look a little bit like this. This is called a step function, the step up shape here. Um, and essentially I'm saying we allow the force to be applied to the spring, we assume the force is applied to the spring after one second. And as you can see that there is no extension on the spring up until the force is applied and then it jumps up. Another good question might be, so what is the effect of this? Well, as we look, um, as we look out, um, we would see that the actual extension, if this is our force here, the extension, depending on the spring constant, would just be exactly the same shape as we saw a couple of videos ago. A pure proportional relationship, like we saw with the proportional component of the PID, always follows the base shape exactly over time. There's no difference because it's just a multiplying factor, like multiplying, even, not multiplying it by a 2 or a 3 or a 0.5. Uh, so it's a pretty simple relationship to model, but it's not always that simple. So let's take a first look at a, a time-dependent element. So this is an example of a damper element or a derivative element if you prefer. Um, examples of this are a resistor in a circuit or friction in a spring and essentially it allows some of the energy to escape the system. In the previous example all the energy in our system was locked up, it couldn't go anywhere and that's why it was proportional. However in the real world we do, we have resistance, we have uh, friction, we have these ways where things uh, can get out of the system. And so practically what happens is it means our response is no longer instantaneous. So let's take exactly the same situation. We have a spring, it is um, for before one second, it is completely compressed, it is at rest, sorry. And then we apply a force to it, what happens then to the output? Well, if it's proportional and has a damper element, so there's some energy loss in the system, it will behave like this. So eventually it will end up almost at the same point that it was in the proportional system, but it will take a lot longer to get there. And this is a classic example of what's called a first order response. This height up here, the difference in height, this is called the gain, and the gain for both this example and the previous one are the same. The difference here is the time constant. So depending on the actual amount of friction, the amount of resistance, it controls how quickly this line approaches that top original gain value. It's the first thing that we've seen, our uh, first way we've seen to describe a change in response over time. And a really interesting thing would happen here if you extended the spring and then compressed it and extended it and compressed it and extended it and compressed it, uh, we would always be stuck in the slow time response system. We'd never get all the way to the top or get all the way back down to the bottom. So it starts to show these time responses. And where this came from is that equation. So let's, let's take a step, step back. For starters, assume this is an LTI system, therefore we can model it as just a sum of its components. So its components we're going to say are a proportional element and a damper element. And we can write that mathematically using these little equations here. So this is the proportional element, so Fk is just my little shorthand for proportional, and Fd is my proportional, is my damper element. And as we've come to, as we come to get familiar with these terms, we know that these general, general terms have a specific form. Why? Because of that great big equation we saw a few, uh, a few videos ago. So we can turn this from a general relationship into a specific one by adding a constant of proportionality and the, uh, and the effort variable, which in this case is the extension of the spring. Same thing over here, we turn it into the appropriate term, so this is the 
representation for a damper term or a derivative term and we've got a different constant of proportionality. This bit here is a little bit tricky. This is second year math, but essentially we do a variable substitution to make our equation easier to solve when we turn it from a time variable to a different variable, which you'll see later, and that makes the algebra far, far simpler. So what it allows us to do is rearrange this equation even though there's a derivative in it and we can calculate something like this. We can calculate the final x position based on the applied force, the constant of proportionality of the spring, um, the constant of proportionality of the damper element and this value s which is related to time. So it's a measure of how much time has passed. This then allows us to calculate our transfer function as before, just using these simple linear relationships here. So let's take a look at one more element, um, which we will do in the next video, which is an inertial element to see more complicated responses again.